Hi there. Today we will be looking at this technique that allows you to create and draw glow in the dark effects. You can really use this technique in any scenario you want with what we will be learning today. However, in this video we will be mimicking the real life effect where you shine a bright light on a glow in the dark surface and watch the glow fade once you take the light away. The methods we'll be looking at today will be done inside of the Octane Render Engine. However, this method still works just the same in any other render engine, including Vanilla Cinema 4D, as the effects do not rely on any third parties to be accomplished. We'll get started by first adding in our object that we want to draw onto. I'll be using a plane for this example. It's also highly recommended that you have a rather dense and high poly count in the area you'll be drawing on, as that will determine the resolution of your glow in the dark shapes. We want to make our object editable, as we will need to access the vertex information. Now go ahead and select the faces of the area you wish to draw on. In my case, it's all of them. Then navigate to the Select drop-down menu, and select the Set Vertex Weight function, then hit OK. We now have access to the vertex map of our object, and we can now use it to control the glow and the dark effect, which we will get to shortly. I'll be adding an Octane Spotlight for this, but this effect literally does not require any real objects to work, so it's completely arbitrary for what you use. All it does is help to direct our subjects more easily. The glow effect is driven by fields, so we'll get started with that by adding a cone-shaped field to match our cone-shaped spotlight, as a child of said spotlight. Again though, it's completely arbitrary, so feel free to go wild with the shapes. Try your best to match the field boundaries with your object's shape as well, as it will help make the glow effect more realistic. Once you've done that, we can then prep the material where the glow effect will take place. We'll start by adding an Octane Diffuse material for this example. Once created, apply the material to your object, then open up the Material Node Editor. We'll need to create the emission nodes, so we'll do so by heading to the emission tab in our material and clicking the texture emission button. This will give us an emission node where we can input custom textures and mathematical values. Then scroll all the way down on the node list until you find the vertex map node and drag it into our editor. Once done, select the vertex node and drag in our object's vertex map tag into the vertex map link in our node. Then connect the vertex map node into the distribution input of our emission node. You'll see that the material goes dark, that is because there is nothing telling the vertex map how to behave. So let's fix that now. Click on our object's vertex tag once more, and enable the use fields setting. This will display the fields manager, and this is where we will drive the glow and fade effect. Start by dragging the field object we created a minute ago, into the field manager. But make sure to keep it above the freeze layer. You can now see that our field object is creating a glowing circle in the material. But we don't want it to be white right now, so let's change the color by dragging in an RGB spectrum node and plugging it into the texture input of our emission node. We we'll make this color a sort of light green to mimic a realistic glow in the dark look. This is a very simple way of producing the color, but we'll get into the more advanced way at the end. Now adjust the emission settings until you get the desired look that you're after. Now you can see that when we move our spotlight and field object, the glowing circle now follows where we shine the light. However, this is acting more like a spotlight and not leaving a fading trail, like in reality. We'll fix this issue by going back into our fields manager inside the vertex tag and adding in a decay effector above our main field and adjusting the strength to around 80%. That's all we need to do for this trail effect. However, you'll probably notice that it's not working at first when we move our objects around. We can easily fix this by advancing forward at least one frame in our timeline. The effect will not register if we're on frame zero. Now you can see the trail effect working perfectly when we move our objects around. We can now easily draw anything we want with light. We can even automate the drawing motion with a vibrate tag like so. All I'm doing here is changing the position, rotation, and frequency values inside the vibrate tag to get the desired look I'm after. Let's now look at the other method of choosing the color, like I mentioned earlier. We'll be using a gradient node for this, which allows us to control the transition of the colors. Plug the vertex node into the gradient input, then plug the gradient node into the emission texture input. The vertex node tells the gradient how the gradient should be projected, and where to stop projecting. 
The right side of this gradient is the inner portion of the glow effect, so this is where we'll choose our color. We leave the other side black, as to create a more smooth transition in the glow effect. A really cool benefit to using a gradient is that you can even add multiple colors. If we add this rainbow preset for example, it gives us a really nice thermal vision look, which could be used for effects like leaving fading handprints on surfaces for example. You may have noticed throughout this whole tutorial, the undesirable dotted line effect when we create the trail. This can easily be mitigated with a very simple trick. We'll firstly need to duplicate our existing vertex tag. While selecting the newly created tag, drag the old original tag into the fields manager of the new vertex tag. Select the new vertex map layer and navigate to its layer tab. In there, change the mode type from nearest to average. Change its radius setting to your desired taste, which you can see update live in the viewport. This is essentially blurring the original vertex tag's effects so that the dotted lines blur more seamlessly into each other. Just remember to update our materials vertex node with our new vertex tag so that our material is aware of the change. You can now see that the dotted line effect is significantly reduced, and if we increase our blur strength even more, it's essentially a non-issue now. That concludes this tutorial on how to draw with glow in the dark materials inside of Cinema 4D. If you enjoyed or found this tutorial helpful, consider taking a look at my Patreon, where you can get early access to more of these tutorials, as well as other perks. Feel free to also join our Discord server, where you can share your work and meet some other amazing artists. Links to these are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.